From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. And good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Thursday, August 11th. New this morning, Montana kids continue lagging behind in COVID-19 vaccination rates. Well, more than half of Montana high schoolers haven't gotten that shot and 75% of middle and elementary school students are not vaccinated. So a new semester is beginning and most schools across Montana have lifted their mask mandates. Billings doctors tell us vaccines can arm kids with a powerful tool against COVID-19. There's um, also folks that have felt like it has not been recommended strongly enough. So I'm here as a pediatrician saying absolutely I recommend it for all children, not just high risk, not ones that just live with somebody that might be high risk, but all children should be vaccinated. So in many cases, this advice is falling on deaf ears in Montana. With more on the numbers, we're going to bring in our Diane Parker. So Diane, how does Montana compare with the rest of the nation when it comes to these COVID vaccination rates? Yeah, well, good morning, Andrea, and you're certainly right about that. We have the numbers to back it up. The CDC reports more than 50 million children ages 5 to 11 nationwide have received at least one dose of the vaccine. It is equal to about 37% of that population compared to just 24% in Montana. For 12 to 17 year olds, 69% have gotten the vaccine. Nationally, the number falls to 46% in Montana though. Dr. Lessinger says that when she recommends the shot to local parents, the reaction is hot and cold. There's a lot that we're really anxiously waiting for um, this vaccine, especially in the younger kids. And so I'd have patients that would ask every time, is it approved yet? And like, we're still waiting. Um, and then there's others that um, are um, definitely need more education, more time. And certainly a lot to consider as we head right back into a brand new school year. It's coming up right away. Andrea, I'll go ahead and send it back to you. All right, Diane, those numbers tell it all. Thanks so much for that. We'll see you a little bit later. All right, we are hearing from former President Donald Trump this morning. One day after he was questioned under oath by the New York Attorney General, it is part of a civil investigation into his business practices. CBS's Trinity Chavez picks up the story from here. When Donald Trump was running for office in 2016, he had strong words for anyone taking the Fifth Amendment. You see, the mob takes the Fifth. If you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? On Wednesday, the former president did just that, invoking his Fifth Amendment right time and again in an hours-long deposition with New York Attorney General Letitia James. Her civil investigation is looking into whether Trump's real estate businesses inflated the value of their assets, including his apartment in New York's Trump Tower. Trump has denied the allegations and on social media offered his reasons for not answering questions. When your family, your company, become the targets of an unfounded, politically motivated witch hunt, you have no choice. In civil cases, when you have potential criminal liability elsewhere, it's common and expected to have lawyers instruct their clients to take the Fifth Amendment, to not say anything that potentially could be used in a criminal case against them. The New York Attorney General's office said it will pursue the facts and the law wherever they may lead. Our investigation continues. The deposition follows Monday's unprecedented FBI search of Trump's Florida home, which was unrelated to the New York investigation. Agents spent nine hours in the residence and searched an office for documents that could contain classified information. It's believed the documents were removed from the White House when Trump moved out in 2021. Trinity Chavez, CBS News, New York. All right, it is almost the weekend, and of course, we all want to know how it's going to be outside. Good morning to you, Miller. Well, good morning, Andrea. How's it going? Happy Thursday to you. You as well, yeah. yeah and happy I'm Thursday, everybody. Always just waiting to see what you're going to say, because <laughs> it seems like it's been just different every day. <laughs> yeah, well. Just something different. Yeah, happening. something different. Well, we're going to add something different today, too. Okay, how about right. that? No, it's going to stay hot. That stays the same, but we're going to add in the chance of rain. How about that? All right, let's take a look at some numbers from yesterday. High got up to 95, not a record. Uh, some areas saw some records. We'll show you that here in a second, uh, but a good seven degrees above the norm. Overnight low down to 61. Uh, yesterday had a top gust near 30 at the airport. No rain, of course, for the month. We're just over a tenth of an inch on the plus side for the year, 11.73 inches. Now we're still in the hole for the month. It's been a dry month, but for the year, we're still in pretty good shape. Latest drought monitor comes out uh, this morning. We'll have to give you an update on that. Record highs yesterday, Sheridan 104, Cody 97, so very hot down in northern parts of Wyoming. Uh, great shot there this morning on the sunrise from the Stockman Bank weather cam. We're sitting at 72 
at the airport. Another mild start. Humidity at six, uh, 64 percent. So it's a very sticky out there. Winds out in the northwest at about 14 miles an hour. You can see we do have some rain off to our west and off to our north northeast. Temperatures right now 60s and 70s on our way to highs again, mainly in the 90s today. So we're staying hot through the weekend but maybe more seasonal temperatures on the way. We'll yeah. take a look. Okay, up. got it. Yeah, I know I had a sweater on this morning and I was like, this sweater feels real <laughs> snug. It is sticky out there. That's a good word to use. Very sticky, a little sticky. Yeah, you get, you get those dew points in the 60s, yeah, you start to feel that moisture in the air. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right, Miller, thanks so much. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. All right, the tennis coach at Bozeman High School is in custody this morning for making sexual advances to an undercover detective that he thought was a 13-year-old boy. Kenneth Sheehan is being held on a $100,000 bond charged with sexual abuse of children. Police say he engaged in a fake social media profile that was set up by Bozeman police asking for lewd photos. The detective wrote to him and said he was only 13, to which the coach responded, I'm nervous you're a cop. I could get into trouble. Eventually, Sheehan asked to meet the boy at a park where he was arrested. His next court appearance is August 26. Those with the Montana Department of Corrections are getting $780,000 to support their response to the opioid epidemic. The grant will help develop additional treatment programs for inmates. In the last fiscal year, criminal possession of dangerous drugs was by far the most common offense for people in Montana DOC facilities. 65% of inmates in U.S. prisons are dealing with substance use disorders. Oh, this morning, thousands are being evacuated from their homes in southwestern France as wildfires continue to spread near Bordeaux. 16 homes have burned in that region where fire activity is extremely rare and it is likely to get much worse as much of Europe deals with heat waves and nearly 80% of France's firefighters are volunteers. Victims of domestic and sexual abuse in Billings will soon have a new place to turn for help. Crews are building a brand new shelter specifically for them. The new YWCA facility places an emphasis on privacy. It's also another option in the city after 20 years of a single space. Officials say the shelter fills a need in our community because domestic violence is on the rise. People really need more privacy um, and respect for their health. So this new building is going to be 25 studio units where each woman and each woman and her children will have their own little apartment. Domestic violence has spiked hugely in the last few years. This new shelter will allow us to um, serve that additional need, but it also allows us to serve the additional need in a much better way. The project is set to be complete by November. As the new school year gets underway, we are taking a look at a brand new high school set to open in Billings. Q2's David Jay heads out to the West End to show us Billings Christian's brand new facilities. This is the campus of Billings Christian High School. It used to be Yellowstone Christian College. They've been remodeling and working on classrooms for several months now and expect to be ready when about 100 students come to class in two weeks. It's been crazy. We've been going 24-7 with volunteers, contractors, subcontractors, carpet guys, plumbers, Wi-Fi guys. We've got staff that are showing up even in their summertime serving and just trying to get this campus ready. Our school is flooded with um, people trying to come in and enroll and we're trying to create space for them. And God just bless us with this incredible property. Scott Moe is the Dean of Students and Activities at Billings Christian High School and says donors have helped in many ways, including with the property, which has nine classrooms and three buildings and a chapel on 11 acres. There's a supporter that purchased this for us that wanted this campus to remain a Christian campus, and they're carrying the note for us for five years. An incredible blessing for us. Um, so we're just in incredibly grateful. Billings Christian is adding a middle school on Grand Avenue, and the high school will move to Shiloh Road. That brings an increase from 60 to 100 students at the high school and a total of 400 at both campuses. The school has been balancing the development of two new campuses, and the enrollment naturally has skyrocketed. Craig Kars is a boys basketball coach and teaches several subjects. He says students from different denominations and religions attend the school. I want people to have information and then they can process it and make their decisions. There's no one here saying to anybody, you have to believe this, you have to do this. Yeah, not at all. And they say they want to give good guidance for the students during their high school years. And that's when the characters molded. We're all about trying to build a strong foundation. And once the kids have a strong foundation, then we can send them off to college and then they become great citizens. They become great fathers, mothers and wives and spouses. In Billings, David J, MTN News. 
All right, a Billings educator is being recognized as one of the best in her field. And get this, her district is only a fraction of the size of fellow nominees. As Q2's Casey Conlon shows us, it's not hard to see why. It's pretty quiet here in the halls of Elder Grove with the school year still a couple of weeks away, but one person you're sure to find is technology director Carol Phillips. And that's a good thing because the district would likely implode without her. People have no idea what value she has. She's really irreplaceable. Elder Grove doesn't need to hold a popularity contest because Carol Phillips would run away with it. How many phone calls and requests do you get? <laughs> a lot. Um, um, on a monthly average, probably a couple hundred tickets. I have almost 3,000 pieces of equipment I'm responsible for on the campus. And it's just her, a department of one. Carol Phillips is actually one of the most brilliant people I know. There's experiments. Phillips started as a volunteer at Elder Grove until after four years, the district realized what it had and created the position for her. She's so efficient and she knows everything that goes on in the school. It takes an incredible amount of stress away from not only you know, Mr. Rice and I's administrators, but as staff and students. Rice and Moore were thrilled to nominate Phillips for the Withrow CTO of the Year Award and ecstatic when she won. So was she. I was in shock, actually, because a lot of times I'm kind of an island unto myself. I appreciated the fact that they recognized how hard I was working because you know, everybody likes a little bit of affirmation, right? At some point, Phillips will leave. So she started training her replacements. So the students have their um, gloves and their goggles for safety. This is Phillips' tech team, a group of middle schoolers who she's teaching to do just about anything with technology. They'll repair equipment, they'll go install something, they'll drop things off, they'll go get something, bring it back, repair it, and return it. So they're they're part of my team. The science teacher's phone wasn't working, so they were taking it apart to see if they could figure out. So it's one of the most popular clubs on campus and Phillip's favorite part of the job. You can see her light up. Contact light. When their projects work, almost as much as they do. And he was like, yes! He was like so excited. They all want to make it a full-time class. Phillips is working on it. For now, she'll continue making a big difference in her small pond. Most of the school districts that have won it have been 20 to 50,000. So to be Elder Grove and be under 700, I was really flattered and honored to be a part of that elite team. Can't think of a better word to describe her. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News.